The Zionist armies that now occupy Palestine claim their ancient Jewish prophets predicted that in the last days of this world, their own God would raise them up a Messiah who would lead them to their promised land, and they would set up their own divine government in this newly gained land. This divine government would enable them to rule all other nations with a rod of iron. If the Israeli Zionists believe their present occupation of Arab Palestine is the fulfillment of predictions made by their Jewish prophets, then they also religiously believe that Israel must fulfill its divine mission to rule all other nations with a rod of irons, which only means a different form of iron-like rule, more firmly entrenched even than that of the former European colonial powers. These Israeli Zionists religiously believe their Jewish God has chosen them to replace the outgated European colonialism with a new form of colonialism so well disguised that it will enable them to deceive the African masses into submitting willingly to their divine authority and guidance without the African masses being aware that they are still colonized. The Israeli Zionists are convinced they have successfully camouflaged their new kind of colonialism. Their colonialism appears to be more benevolent, more philanthropic, a system with which they rule simply by getting their potential victims to accept their friendly offers of economic aid and other tempting gifts that they dangle in front of the newly independent African nations whose economies are experiencing great difficulties. During the 19th century, when the masses here in Africa were largely illiterate, it was easy for European imperialists to rule them with force and fear. But in this present era of enlightenment, the African masses are awakening, and it is impossible to hold them in check now with the antiquated methods of the 19th century. The imperialists, therefore, have been compelled to devise new methods since they can no longer force or frighten the masses into submission, they must devise modern methods that will enable them to maneuver the African masses into willing submission. The modern 20th century weapon of neo-imperialism is dollarism. The Zionists have mastered the science of dollarism, the ability to come posing as a friend and benefactor, bearing gifts and all other forms of economic aid and offers of technical assistance. Thus, the power and influence of Zionist Israel in many of the newly independent African nations has fast become even more unshakable than that of the 18th century European colonialists. And this new kind of Zionist colonialism differs only in form and method, but never in motive or objective. At the close of the 19th century, when European imperialists wisely foresaw that the awakening masses of Africa would not submit to their old method of ruling through force and fears, these ever-scheming imperialists had to create a new weapon and to find a new base for that weapon. The number one weapon of 20th century imperialism is Zionist dollarism, and one of the main bases for this weapon is Zionist Israel. The ever-scheming European imperialists wisely placed Israel where she could geographically divide the Arab world, infiltrate and sow the seed of dissension among African leaders, and also divide the Africans against the Asians. Zionist Israel's occupation of Arab Palestina has forced the Arab world to waste billions of precious dollars on armaments, making it impossible for these newly independent Arab nations to concentrate on strengthening the economies of their countries and elevate the living standard of their people. And the continued low standard of living in the Arab world has been skillfully used by the Zionist propagandists to make it appear to the Africans that the Arab leaders are not intellectually or technically qualified to lift the living standard of their people thus indirectly inducing Africans to turn away from the Arabs and towards the Israelis for teachers and technical assistance. They cripple the bird's wing and then condemn it for not flying as fast as they. The imperialists always make themselves look good, but it is only because they are competing against economically crippled newly independent countries whose economies are actually crippled by the Zionist capitalist conspiracy. They can't stand against fair competition, Thus, they dread Gamal Abdel Nasser's call for African-Arab unity under socialism. If the religious claim of the Zionists is true, that they were to be led to the promised land by their Messiah, and Israel's present occupation of Arab Palestine is the fulfillment of that prophecy, where is their Messiah whom their prophets said would get the credit for leading them there? It was Ralph Bunch who negotiated the Zionists into possession of occupied Palestine. Is Ralph Bunch the Messiah of Zionism? If Ralph Bunch is not their Messiah, and their Messiah has not yet come, then what are they doing in Palestine ahead of their Messiah? Did the Zionists have the legal or moral right to invade Arab Palestine, uproot its Arab citizens from their homes, and seize all Arab property for themselves just based on the religious claim that their forefathers lived there thousands of years ago, 
Only a thousand years ago, the Moors lived in Spain. Would this give the Moors of today the legal and moral right to invade the Iberian Peninsula, drive out its Spanish citizens, and then set up a new Moroccan nation, where Spain used to be, as the European Zionists have done to our Arab brothers and sisters in Palestine? In short, the Zionist argument to justify Israel's present occupation of Arab Palestine has no intelligent or legal basis in history, not even in their own religion. Where is their Messiah?